Good afternoon. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at Chromium OS. Now I do realize this is not an official Google build of Chromium OS or Chrome OS, but I wanted to show it to you anyway because it is kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and look at the website I got it from. This is chromeos.hexa.net and you'll see here Flow is the latest in Hex's line of Chromium OS builds. It takes a 2 gigabyte USB drive. He recently upgraded that from 1 to 2. I say recently, but we'll get to that in a second. This was actually last updated in April. But it's Chromium OS, some info on it, how to make a USB drive on whatever, the development blog, uh, frequently asked questions, and the downloadable links here at the bottom for a USB image or a VMware. I've tried them both out. They're both running about the same. So I'm going to show it to you in VirtualBox. But let's go ahead and look at his development blog very quickly. If you go to the Chromium OS page, it says here, the last update was actually April 27th. There's some major updates that were in the works, but there haven't actually been anything pushed out as far as I can tell. I've downloaded the most recent one, and it's actually the one from February, where they've made some changes such as supporting NVIDIA, they've been supporting Realtek, lots of things like that. Mm, that's about enough to say about it for now. Let's go ahead and look at the OS itself. All right, so here on the left, you'll see we've got the Flow built by Hexa. This is actually Chromium OS. You got the, the Chromium logo there. And the username and password that's provided by the guy running the site is actually Face Punch. Not sure where that comes from. I'm sure it has something to do with the Hexa guy himself. Now, I have used this before, so it's going to say that it didn't shut down appropriately. It's still, again, a very early version of Chrome and Chromium OS. But let's go ahead and walk through it and just give you a quick look at what it actually does. So basically what we've got here is the Chromium browser. It's a very standard, looks a whole lot like the one you see on your desktop. But there are a couple of little changes. In the upper left hand corner we've got a Chromium button. If we click on this, in the Hexa build it actually looks like this, and I believe it should look this way on the Google build. But what you will notice is this is actually going out to Hexa's website and pulling down the menu from there. So it's not anything that's actually locally on the machine and you'll notice there it doesn't actually go away so if I actually close out of the browser entirely you'll see this web page is not available and now it's trying to go to chromeosmenu.hexa.net to actually pull down that menu so we'll go ahead and turn the wired connection back on and then we'll check it again hit reload and there's our menu again now what you're seeing in here are a list of applications that are not exactly applications you've got all these different web-based systems that you can connect to such as Hulu such as Facebook you can go to different email clients and use those for example we don't have hotmail on there I don't really want hotmail but just to give you the example let's do it with mobile me if I hit this plus symbol it's going to put it into my menu added mobile me to your menu now if I come back over here there's mobile me if I wanted to take it or any of the others out of there I can hit delete and they'll go away if I wanted to remove Tetris, I could do that. There's balloons, just more options that are out there. It looks like we do have a little bit of an overlap. For some reason, uh, it's the, the screen resolution on the VMware is not wanting to go as big as it should be. Let's see what happens if I open up balloons. There we go. It's going to balloonsplay.com. Uh, that's the one thing I really need to mention here. All the things that are in the menu currently are not applications. They're websites or web applications, depending on how you look at them. And that's one of the key features of Chrome OS is that everything is web-based. Everything is cloud-based. I don't know if over the long term they're planning to move it to something where you would have some local apps or at least some components of the apps locally. But this is a good way to handle it. I mean, basically, if all you need is the browser and a subset of bookmarks, this is a way to do it. Uh, the hardware support is still pretty limited, but they're working on that. Hopefully later this year we'll have a good update that'll have... Uh, all sorts of new hardware support and possibly even some applications. I don't know the specifics on any of that, but as an example, if I were to go to Gmail, just double click on it, it goes to mail.google.com, and you can sign in with your stuff there. You can, in addition, just type in whatever you want to here. So you can go to YouTube or go back over to the app tab and hit the YouTube button, and it'll open up the YouTube website with flash running and all of that fun stuff. So if I were to select a video here, Oh, let's just go to my, my second channel and take a look. We're probably going to get some really rough performance out of this, but I just want to take a look. There we go. There's my Twill Talks channel, and it's loading up Flash Video by default. Works very nicely out of the box, but one thing I would like to mention here, and if you're considering looking at this, you'll probably want to look at this as well. It's not letting me right-click on it, but 
Flash Player, and this is actually version 10.0.32. This is not the 10.1 that's more recent. Uh, if there were a more recent build, something beyond February, it might have a newer one. But for the moment, this does work. Basically, that's about all there is to it, other than this upper right-hand corner where you've got your input location, you've got your time and date where you can configure it. There we go, you can actually set it to your time zone, there's your internet settings, your basics, what pages you want to go to, your bookmarks that you can synchronize, and any under the hood stuff as far as networking, privacy, proxy, download locations, etc. So that, those are just some options you can set. And of course the last one here, the last two, you've got your battery monitor and your network connection center. If you had wireless or cell cellular, it would work there. I tried it on my netbook and the wireless worked very well out of the box, Intel, all that fun stuff. Tried it on my uh, laptop and it didn't work quite as well, but it is also an Intel card. Probably just having to do with it not being a netbook. I know this is sort of geared toward the netbook environment. So that's pretty much it. This is Chrome OS. It's actually Chromium OS in, in this instance. I'm looking forward to seeing a newer build of it. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I can just build one myself at some point, but haven't had the time or the motivation to do so yet. But if you want to give it a try, it's free to get. Go to chromeos.hexa.net and download it. And uh, the username is facepunchfacepunch, or you can use your own Gmail information to log into it. But that's about all about Chromium OS. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.